Hello. I'd like to talk to you a little bit today about the story of Palm Sunday. It says that Jesus told his disciples, Go on ahead into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find there tied a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it to me. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing that? Just say, The Lord needs it, and will send back to send it back here immediately. Palm Sunday. Have you ever been really praised and awarded in such a way that you just felt good all over? Felt happy and fulfilled and this was what life was all about? And then a few days later, or weeks, the bottom fell out. And you felt so discouraged and so alone again. Happens to all of us. Certainly happens to politicians. Politicians which are riding high in the polls and popularity today are, are like the has-beens, those who are unwanted later. I think the last president, when President Bush was elected, his approval rating was up in the 70s, quite high. But by the time he finally quit in 2008, his ratings were in the 20s. In fact, Congresses were even lower. It happens to all of them. It happens to sport figures. People come and are recognized as the, the deliverers, just what the team wanted. But then they have a bad season or a bad series and they become goats instead of, you know, great ideals. It happens to people who get married. They get married and they feel, oh, you are the one. I feel so much bliss. I feel so fulfilled, so complete by you. And then in a few months, few years, sometimes days, all that seems to go. In fact, studies show that for the first 17, 16, 17 years, you know, there's a lot of misgivings. Each one is trying to change the other one to the illusion they thought they were before they were married. And to finally they just give up. Sometimes they then divorce. But many times then they decide by not trying to control or change, they they really do like each other. It happens to clergy as well. Oh, when clergies come soften to, to new works or new churches, why, they are like the messenger they have been waiting for. They're like Christ has come. Well, in a few months, a few weeks, sometimes a few days, it's like, oh, dear Christ, what is this that has come? And they want him out. And they call the representatives of the denomination and they get people together. And it can be a pretty lonely experience. Well, the story of Jesus on Palm Sunday is very similar. Jesus is going to be received with great praise, but in a few days he will be betrayed and left to die all alone. The story starts on the Mount of Olives, a mount of healing, passing through the little towns of Bethpage and Bethany. Bethpage is symbolic because it simply means a house or a place of unripened figs. Bethany, which he passed through, also is a place, a house of sun, or a place where unripened figs can be ripened. And then he sends his disciples ahead to get a colt, some say a donkey. I saw a sign in a church that said, was it a donkey or was it a colt? Well, a colt is just a name for a young, untrained donkey. And Jesus says, make sure you get one that's never been written before and bring it to me. And then I'll give it back later. It's an old, old story which goes back thousands of years to ancient e Egypt and other countries in that eastern Mediterranean. It's a story of the God-man, the one who was supposed to be the savior of all misery, comes riding on a donkey, never been ridden. Donkeys are symbolic of our ego, untrained, impulsive. Lustful, greedy, unpredictable. That's our, our lower selves. And Jesus, representing the Christ in us all, the Christ mind, rides that untrained ego in perfect discipline, perfect obedience. People waving palm branches. Palm branches was the old symbol from ancient Egypt of hailing one's divinity. Oh, you are the Divine One. Oh, you have come to save us from all our misery. Well, they did that, but then they finally turned on Him. And you know the rest of the story, what we call the Passion Week or the Week of Suffering. 
We all know that. We all go through that. This is a week in which we can monitor and, and journal. Be aware of how fickle we are in our ego. How fickle we are about things that are said about us. Can we realize that we are Christ in us? That was the whole teaching of Jesus. So that whether we win or whether we lose in this bipolar world where we win, we lose, that's just the way it is. Can we still be at peace by that which changeth not and abides within us forever? This is a week of such a test so that we can overcome the donkeys in our lives, that eagle, stubbornness. In ancient Egypt, often at this time of the year, the equinox, they would take a, a donkey and throw it off the cliff. It was a symbol of throwing away that old self, coming aware of the new higher self, and riding down the road with equanimity, having palms in our minds or symbols that we are also potentially to become aware of the Christ self within us. So go through this week aware of all the failures, the things that have been said about you, even by friends sometimes, by spouses, by children, by whatever. Just let it go. Be at peace. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. Some of you know my mother was quite sick this past week and was in the hospital, St. Vincent's in Erie, wonderful people there who showed and, and exuded the love of Christ. I was leaving one night in an old coat and a nice dapper hat on and I went to the restroom and the, and the African-American custodian stopped me coming out and he said, are you a lawyer? I said, no. Are you a doctor? No, I said. Well, what are you? Who are you? And I said, well, I'm like a doctor of souls. I'm a minister. Oh, he says, you're just the person I need to talk to. And he told me about he owns an apartment. Has three or four apartments in this big building. One of them he rents to a brother-in-law and his sister. Well, they've been running behind in their rent. And so he went to them and said, you either have to pay the rent or I'll have to ask you to leave. Well, his brother-in-law punched him right in the face. Well, this man was very stocky and strong. But he said, I did not fight back. I could have really hurt him, but I didn't. And my friends are making fun of me. What do you think? I said, I think you acted just like Jesus, just like Christ himself. He said, well, that's what I'm trying to say, but I wonder maybe I should have really showed how strong I was and how assertive I was. I says, well, you've ever heard the story about did it hit you on one cheek, turn the other one? Yes. I said, well, you did that. Well, he thanked me. And then he said, you know, if I would have hit my brother-in-law, why, we probably both would have ended up in jail. You know how easy it is for folks of our color to end up in jails these days. I said, yes, man, you did the right thing, and your life can bear fruit that you are forgiving and kind and long-suffering. Oh, we are all figs on the way to being ripened. May the green, unripened figs of our true selves be blossomed in the warmth sun of spring of the Son of God, the daughter of God whom we all are. Make this a happy week. Regardless of what happens, be at peace and be reminded each moment of each day and before you go to bed, and after you rise in the morning, that you are going on that journey of being a ripened, luscious, delicious fig fruit. God bless you. God bless you with awareness, with mindfulness, as you remember. Peace and namaste to you all.